That's right. We are right here at KICC Nairobi where the Booked for Life event by Standard Group is happening. I am Brian Zuzutieno and welcome to this panel discussion which we will be discussing issues to do with ethics in our universities, ethics and leadership, particularly now that we are in an election year. I have with me quite a panel right here, a gentleman and a lady, Dr. Halima Saado Abdullahi, the Vice Chancellor of Uma University, mm -hmm. and Dr. Tim Kiruhi, mm -hmm. Vice Chancellor International Leadership University. Mm -hmm. Lady, gentlemen, good to see both of you. Uh, thank you very much. It's good to be here, and uh, good morning, our viewers. Great, great. Go on to hear from me a little bit, Dr. Halima. <laughs> thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and it's good to be here. Ah, great. We're going to just jump right into the conversation, but you can also tune in at KTN News KE and talk to us uh, on those handles at Brian George KE at KTN News KE, hashtag booked for life right here at KICC. Uh, we're coming to you live from this venue. I'm going to start with uh, the lady, of course. We have seen some of the people or some of the leaders in the political class currently who have graduated from both of your universities. Mm -hmm. Some have taken courses, taken units, and, and we are seeing them today. But the Kenyan leadership is kind of questionable. Mm. Do you think it's time now to be or go heavy on the teaching of ethics and, and being ethical as a leader, even as we you know, inculcate curriculum and, and teach all these professional courses? I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Halima to go on this one first. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Yes, I think universities have a big role um, mm. because if you look at um, our leaders in the country now, majority of them are graduates from um, high standing universities in the country. Mm. And um, I believe that there's always, you know, a relearning and rechanging uh, the way we actually deliver our, our curriculums in the university to be able to have leaders who are who actually, I call them transformational leaders. Mm -hmm. leaders who have a positive impact in the society mm -hmm. and as we see now yes we have uh, leaders who are actually very transformative and then we have leaders who their integrities and their ethics are in question mm -hmm. from where i'm sitting i think uh, my experience in the higher education is we have two main challenges one is uh, the curriculum mm -hmm. how we are actually uh, developing our curriculums are mainly on the technical skills so the students are very our technical skills if a student is an engineer he can come out and he'll be the best engineer in the world. Mm -hmm. However, there's very limited emphasis on the soft skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, because uh, if you look at our university, and, and I don't know about my colleague here, you'll mm -hmm. find that soft skills are either taught once in a, in a semester or once in academic year. And then by the time the students are graduating, for example, with communication skills, maybe they've only done it twice. Mm -hmm. But you need some of these soft skills to actually survive and Repetitive. be able to lead uh, mm. and be a, a leader with integrity. Okay. The other thing that we are having is, um, if you look at how universities are being celebrated or how universities are being ranked, mm -hmm. and for example, one of their biggest universities, like the University of Nairobi, that is you know, the highest in terms of ranking in their country, universities are being ranked with regards to their research outputs, their publications, mm -hmm. um, the number of students they are graduating, but nobody is ranking these universities on how their graduates are actually impacting in the society. Mm. If somebody says so and so is, is uh, for example, a not a good leader because his ethics are questionable, we need to know he's a graduate of this which university, and those universities have to be held accountable because we are the ones who are churning out these leaders out. Allow me to stop in a track. So you would mm. actually suggest that we have those metrics to evaluate uh, leaders, or rather grade them with uh, their integrity record. Yeah. Because the university has played a role to, to actually produce this person, isn't mm. it? Mm. If we are saying, for example, University K is the best, mm. however, the graduates out there, <laughs> it is not a reflection of what we are saying, uh, then the universities have to be held accountable. Yes. I'm going to ask Dr. Kiruhi the sure. same question as, as, you, as yeah. you also take up on this one. Thank you. Are there graduates, mm. and we can say this in hushed tones, yeah. are there graduates from your university that you look at today yeah. and then the leadership platforms and you say this one? Mm. You are disappointed in a way, <laughs> as you respond to the same same question about Th thank calculating you. ethics in professional training. Thank you very much. At the International Leadership University, our slogan is actually our mandate is to develop leaders of integrity. So the question you're asking is right at the center of what we have set for ourselves. Mm. We know it's a very high uh, calling, so to speak. It's not an easy thing to do in a country that otherwise believes that uh, kito kidogo, corruption is a way to go. But uh, we've committed ourselves because we believe that this is what's needed for Africa's transformation. Mm. When you think about our country and Africa in general, 
the, the our challenge is not resources. Mm -hmm. It is not skilled people, like you said. Sure. It is not at uh, infrastructure. Now we have much better infrastructure. It's not technology. Mm -hmm. We are almost leading in some areas of technology. Mm -hmm. It is that software, mm -hmm. the societal software of integrity and ethics. So that's why we've chosen to respond to that as our, as our mission statement. Now, what do we do? Maybe just to respond to that before I come you know, to talking about our output, mm -hmm. is that uh, we are very intentional about not only uh, tackling issues of ethics. Yes, we teach that to every student, and we have several units actually that deal with ethics and responsibility and so on. Mm -hmm. But we also ensure that every student is mentored. Mm -hmm. And uh, we work not only with our, our faculty and staff, we also work with actually professionals whose integrity we can vouch for who are in the marketplace. Because we want them to be graduating aware that you can survive as a person of integrity. Because that's a, the, it's a belief problem. Mm -hmm. Most Kenyans believe you can't make it unless you know some tall uncle, yeah, unless yeah. you cut corners and so on. So until we change that belief, uh, we cannot go very far. Mm -hmm. So we work, we work, they work with people who are in the industry mm -hmm. Uh, in their industry who tell them it's possible i'm able to to work at it it's not easy mm -hmm. but it's possible okay. so we are already doing that in terms of mentorship mm -hmm. the other thing we do is also a community service program mm -hmm. uh in fact we'll be having one in july mm -hmm. where again we invite all our students mm -hmm. to go on, a, on an on opportunity to go and engage with the community and because we are trying to help them realize that the skills you are you are learning are not just for yourself. True. Uh, it is actually to help you be of service to this country mm -hmm. by serving, you know, some of you know the, the community needs. And we'll go to marginal areas where there are challenges mm -hmm. and they begin to to reflect on how can what they have learned mm -hmm. help them contribute. Mm -hmm. Because I think the other challenge we have as a university sometimes is the ivory tower, you know, mentality. Yeah. Where but you learn a lot of theory, mm -hmm. but when you come to the ground, as they say, mm -hmm. Kukua ground this is different. Different. Mm -hmm. different. So, different. <laughs> so so we want them to be aware yeah. right from their first year. We don't yeah. wait for them to graduate. Mm -hmm. So we want them to demonstrate that. So to your question, <laughs> we want them to demonstrate that leadership when they, while they are students mm -hmm. and even later on. And we've been encouraged by some of them that are actually doing things mm -hmm. even beyond what we'd have expected as students first. Mm -hmm. And then when they graduate, we, we also have some good role models. So yes, um, we know we are, they are, they are no angels by, by any means yeah, <laughs> in a real world. Mm -hmm. But uh, part of our requirement for graduation mm -hmm is that you have demonstrated character. Oh, true. And if, you, if, if we are questionable about it, we actually hold back. We do have one right now we are working through, not to destroy them, mm -hmm. but to mentor them so that we can you know, improve mm -hmm. those areas. Mm -hmm. So it's important to us that we, with the output we have into society mm -hmm. are people who we, who, whose integrity we can vouch for. It is much like a progressive kind of um, inculcating of this, yeah. you know, ethics and everything. Yeah. But I, I love the fact that you brought out the issue about the marketplace because yeah. I, I asked about the political class sure, quite sure. a lot. Yeah. But let's let's look at the bare minimums, yeah. the bare fundamentals. Mm. According to Dr. Kiroi, yes. who is a leader with integrity? The mm. bare minimums, just uh -huh. like the the, the political class will tell you <laughs> these are you. our irreducible <laughs> minimums. <laughs> That's true. Mm. I think integrity can be defined simply as um, you know wh who I am on the in, you know in, in the light is who I am in the dark. Mm. Who I am when I'm in the public view wow. like now is who I'll be in private. Mm. There's that consistency, mm. you know, that uh, that I'm the same person. But also it's it's connected to of course your commitment to values that uphold certain minimum values, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, one of which is, of course, uh, you know, you know, the commitment to, to, to other people that mm -hmm. are, are there for the public good, sure. the commitment to doing what is fair and just mm -hmm. uh, so that I'm not taking advantage, whether it's of my office or, you know, and so on, which is, I guess, the challenge we have with the political class and, and so on. And uh, having these people who have committed to this va a value system so that they have boundaries, there are things they will do or not do because those would otherwise compromise their integrity is very important mm. that uh, we have leaders and uh, even citizens and so on because the challenge is not just the leaders by the way mm. i know the average person would say that kenya is messed up by the few political leaders mm. you know the five thousand or so of them they are not very many mm. but are you telling me yes, that the other 41 true. million are, or 45 million are good people and all the five five thousand bad people if it i is were all a preacher i tell you there are remnants <laughs> 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 that is true that yeah. is true yeah. there are good people both in politics but yeah. also in society. in society and but i think the question is uh you know and this is also a challenge to media mm -hmm. let's also um you know up, uphold let us also give airtime mm. to people 
people who are doing it right. Amazing. Many times in this country, if you want to get publicity, do something awkward, you know, and crazy, you get all the attention of media. Okay. <laughs> it is, it is, but those people who are doing the right thing sometimes get very little air time. Mm. So we also need to reverse that mm. as a value in society. But you see, it's our culture. I mean, yeah. the, even the leaders who got who get caught up in scandals yeah. are the ones who we elect. Yeah. Um, is, it a, is it a cultural <laughs> thing? Hold that thought while I talk to Dr. Halima on this yeah. one. You started on the curriculum. Uh, you talked about it just in bit. And the people who opine that leaders are born, leaders are not made. Others, the reverse is true. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the skills, what are some of the programs that universities across the board, across the country, and tertiary institutions should now start inculcating in their curriculum to, you know, at least spur more leaders and make leadership a much more fundamental thing to have um, in, 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 our, in one's life. Do you think we should also include it in CBC? Anyway, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> what should we develop? No, I think I'll just pick up from my colleague, eh, okay. uh, Dr. Kirui. Um, in terms of leadership, first of all, as universities, and I speak as universities across, not mm. just a specific university, mm. and I take an example of Uma University where I come from, is uh, we need to have graduate attributes. When somebody is coming out of Uma University, how will you know this person is from Uma University? What attributes this person is supposed to have? And even if we link it to CBC that you're saying silently, yeah. <laughs> I am very proud of CBC, so I won't, I won't be silent about it. If you link it from CBC, mm. the universities now are working towards something called out -based, uh, outcome based learning. Mm. So you link the competence with the outcome now. Mm. What do you want our graduates to look like? And one of the things that we must put into that is issues around integrities and ethics. Okay. I am expecting that, for example, in Uma University, one of the attributes is a, a responsible global citizen. Mm -hmm. You know, once you have that responsibility, a sense of responsibility, of course, integrity will come in. What are you doing when nobody is watching you? When you're given a, 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 a role to play, what do you do about that role? So issues around uh, uh, mentorship, issues around um, linking the students at the university level with leaders that we are saying, for example, the leaders that actually have very good, uh, you know, va moral values. They are very, uh, their ethics is very high. Those are the leaders we need to link our students with mm. in terms of learning the practical experience of being a leader with, you know, high moral values, integrity, and ethics. So uh, I think for us is now to get a balance between the practical skills or the technical skills that we teach our students in the university, mm. including the experience in the in the ground. You know, they say the ground between different. Mm. You know, I might come out with all, you know, I've been mentored, uh, I've been taught what is to be honest and things like that. But then when I hit the ground, things are different. I'm given this responsibility and the next day I have a long queue of people waiting outside my office who want favors from me. Mm. And they're powerful people. I usually use this expression, you know, power from above. Wow. Okay. So now that's when you realize the ground is different. So True. then how do we prepare this learners for the ground that is very different? It's actually celebrating. And I'll still come back to what Tim said. Mm. Media needs to start celebrating also the leaders who are doing good. Mm. You know, there's nothing like pub bad publicity. Mm. True. If you start, for lack of a better word, showing, you know, reporting about somebody who's not doing the right thing, but he's always in the media, mm. people will, be like, will want to be like that person. Mm. So even the media has a responsibility. While you celebrate somebody who has made a mistake, and I don't even want us to celebrate. In fact, <laughs> we should ignore them yeah. totally. Yeah. Let's start celebrating people who are doing the right thing. Mm. And they're in this society, including the political uh, uh, Class. But class, yes. Amazing. Let's go back to the marketplace yeah. uh, with you, Dr. Kirui, and uh, give an example, because mm. I ask questions best mm. uh, from illustrations. Mm. Bran graduates mm. from, for example, International Leadership University, mm. gets a job mm. somewhere in an NGO or in a bank or something, mm. and then they get there, but the boss wants them to do the work at whatever cost. Mm. Regardless, mm. you get me those files, even mm. if you have to go bribe somebody, yeah. get me those files, mm. Brian, whatever it is you have to do, mm. I need those files. Mm. I need those figures of accounting cooked mm. because our financial year is ending mm. and we need to give the shareholders an impression that we're making the best. Mm. What, do you, what, do you tell, what, do you, what do you tell a graduate today mm. about that kind of, a, of an approach towards their professional life? Mm. Thank you. Um, it is not possible to be ethical unless you're willing to pay the price. And the ultimate price mm. is not just losing a job. Please say that again. Yes. It is not ethical. Possible to be possible. ethical uh -huh. if you're not willing to pay the price for it. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate price is actually death. It's not just losing a job. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bad thing. Wow. Much worse mm. is to be willing to do that. In my own life, when I've taken up responsibilities, mm -hmm. I've always had that 
as part of, at the back of my mind mm. that this could be the very last time <laughs> I'm playing a role. Mm. But once you have no fear of death, mm -hmm. you actually now cannot be intimidated. Your conscience is clean. You are now free, free. Mm. So our goal is to help our students mm -hmm. to be free. So that they are able to be people of integrity. Amazing. And uh, th that you have to show them that. Mm. But we share our own examples. Uh, we you know that's why we have the mentorship program. Mm. We also help them to connect with people who are paying that price. As I said, in the marketplace, mm. and they're able to say, "Yes, I lost contracts here. I lost tenders here. Mm. I lost a job here." But I, had I did to, the right thing. But I did the right thing. Dr. Halima, may, uh, they, they say uh, the end doesn't justify the means. Talk to us. Talk to us about that. <laughs> Maybe I just pick up from what Dr. Kiru yes, says. Yes, yeah. You have to be ready to pay, you know, mm. the ultimate price. Mm. And um, if I just pick up uh, from the student, in, in the university you also have student leadership. Mm. Because leadership mm. starts in the institutions of learning, including mm. even primary and high school. Mm. And in my university specifically, the student council, I engage them even with difficult conversations. Mm. For example, when a decision has been made by management or it's a policy for, to implement a certain thing, and the students are not happy, mm -hmm. of course students will start making noise. Mm. Then how do you communicate with these students to show them that this is the ultimate thing that needs to be done and it comes with a price? Mm. So for me, continuous dialogue, communication mm. is very key to show that these students, especially uh, the student leaders, that this is how things are done. And when things are difficult and it must be done, it must be done. So are you ready to pay the price? And as Tim said, mm. um, we've had, I think both of us have been higher position than even what we're holding <laughs> now. <laughs> and sometimes Kenyans will tell you, ah, you are in this position at Ahoku Faidika mm. because you didn't accept you know to be bribed or to take the wrong decision mm. and if you're ready to be happy with what you're doing and you're doing right mm. then i think that is the best way to go mm -hmm. but then how do we ensure that that happens to our students because you see out there they are seeing uh, so and so mm -hmm. who has done a b c d is vying, yeah. <coughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry. is vying again and mm. he's, he's being elected he's being celebrated mm. is we need to tell them the way you're saying, uh, does the end justify the mean? Mm. You know, at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, you will be in your corner one day, mm -hmm. and you will be reflecting back on what the decisions you made, mm -hmm. and how, how it has impacted in the lives of the people you've left behind. Mm -hmm. And are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. And I'll come back to your second question: was who is a leader with integrity? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what you do when no one is watching you. Mm -hmm. That's your true self. That is your true self. Okay. Yes. Mm. Ah, great. Just, just a comment yeah, on go CBC. Ahead, go ahead, Dr. Uh, I wanted to add, add something yeah. that I'm very hopeful. Mm. Although we are in a bad place as a society right now, mm. uh, the, the mission of CBC or the vision of CBC mm. is to raise, uh, to empower, uh, sorry, to, 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 to raise an empowered, ethical, and engaged citizenry. Mm. That's what they say. I mean, I know there, there are challenges in implementation and so on, you know, mm -hmm. but if we actually stay with it and we don't lose the sight of that vision, mm -hmm. that's where we are. That's, that's, that's a Kenya software problem. And those are normally engaged, transitions, really. Yeah, yeah. Engaged, empowered, ethical citizens. Mm. If we can get that and get it right, mm -hmm. then I think we'll begin to heal some of the challenges of this country. <coughs> but uh, we must stay with it. We must make, make sure, of course, the resources go to the right place and so on. And of course, have the role models as well, because it is not necessarily they may not be having them in the immediate setting. And at the International Leadership University, we've set some of the same goals. We want our graduates to have character, mm -hmm. to be competent in what they do, mm -hmm. but also to be contextually engaged. Mm -hmm. They know what's going on and they're able to bring transformation or change. So we celebrate those of our graduates who go, even if they pay the price, mm -hmm. but they tell us that I was trying to reform this particular company or industry uh, to bring change. Those are our heroes mm -hmm. and heroines, mm -hmm. and, and we want to celebrate them. Great. Let's, let's, let's begin to wind up this conversation, uh, Dr. Halima. And there's the conversation about the old versus the young. Mm. We're in an election year, mm. and everything is being peddled around. Yeah. Um, those who believe, of course, that leaders are made, leaders are not born. Mm. And we are seeing for the very first time quite a huge chunk, a huge population of young leaders who are coming up, and people are aspiring to be leaders at various capacities, mm. leaders at various positions. What, what do you tell the young leader to watch out for, even as they go into this Thing that has been branded dirty. All right, the politics is a is a is a dirty game. That's a common phrase in our in our in our society. But the question then becomes, how, how what should they watch out for so that they do not compromise, they do not um, you know let down the society that they saw uh, that that so holds hopes for them. I mean, we are looking at a young person as young as 24 years old, and for the first time, and this is. I say this is a lot of respect. Mm. She's a lady who's just come out of campus. 
24 years old, has been nominated to be a uh, uh, Bomet uh, woman rep uh, in, in, in a political party right now. What, what do you tell such kind of leaders? Um, I think for such a leader, first of all, what I'll tell him or her is that they should not lose the vision that brought them to that place. Mm. Uh, they should not fo uh, lose focus. They should stay course. Mm. The eyes on the prize. Because I believe that most of the young leaders, including even the most mature ones, when they are coming into the leadership position and even political position, they always have a vision. Mm. And they always want to do the best. <coughs> but then when they, came into, when they come into the ground, they say the ground is different, mm. then that's when the interferences happen. Mm. But then again, you should not lose the eye on the prize, yes. Yeah. And you have to be ready to pay the ultimate prize. Mm. I'll always... Adore. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, I'll let Dr. Tim go on that one too. Okay. Mm. As we yeah. sort of that. Sure, sure. I, I think uh, very, very, very important. Mm. First of all, I think for me is hopeful mm. that the younger people can emerge mm -hmm. and that our political system is, because it's largely been patronage. Sure. I think the fact that now we can get younger people who are able to emerge as leaders mm -hmm. is very hopeful for the country. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a positive step. Mm -hmm. And it means that people are no longer looking at just at money. Mm. Or mm. even experience is good, but it is not the only factor. True. The fact that somebody has been there forever. For, yeah. So I think the fact that people are looking at qualities of the individual. And I think I'm, what I'm hearing also from the ground is that in many places, people are not even considering parties anymore. Yeah, they true. are actually looking at the individual. The individual yeah, and they are true. saying it doesn't matter the party they come on, we want the right individual. So I think that's a maturity that's coming to our politics. Mm. And, I'm, and I'm personally pleased about that. Mm. And I think, like she said, of course, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. There is no field that anyway that is exactly. easy. Yeah. But especially, of course, the, 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 the issue with politics is that it's big money mm -hmm. and publicity and so on. So managing those things so that they don't destroy you. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that this kind of a young person would be willing to have a mentor. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody who's retired from politics or somebody who is just able to speak into their life mm -hmm. and they are able to maintain that accountability by a group. Mm -hmm. I do have some young people that I've mentored who have actually entered mm -hmm. the, the political race mm -hmm. and I'm very happy for them. Oh, nice. My hope is that they don't become too busy to be mentored. <laughs> so that, or too busy to be mentored. Yeah, so yeah. that now they can maintain that accountability well, relationship. That to their PA. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Amazing. that's my hope. Yeah. So, so I think it's a positive thing, it's a hopeful situation. Uh. And uh, the, it does say that, yes, leaders can be made. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are born leaders, but mm -hmm. most of it, most of us are, have been made. That's why we are in training, you know, leader of leaders, mm -hmm. because we believe they can be made. Amazing. Touch on the marketplace too, yeah. the, the corporate sector, not yeah. just in the public sector too. I, I'd like you to touch on that. What should they watch out for? Because mm -hmm. I, I gave an illustration here. Yeah. Get me those files, whatever yeah. the cost. If you have to bribe a judge, it's whatever, true. just get me those, cook me those books. That, that's a good point. The marketplace. I've been in the space of uh, promoting ethics. So one of my previous roles before my current role was uh, to lead an organization called the Ethical Leadership Network. Mm. And what we found out, any business that goes to the second generation mm. is only those which are founded on ethics. The others can thrive for one generation. You know, you can bribe and you know, cut your way and so on. Those businesses never thrive. But most business people dedicate a lot of their life to building their empire, so to speak. True. Why build an empire that is going to collapse on you anyway? Mm. So why don't you just do it right? Mm. It may be slower in growth. Mm -hmm. It may not as be as big as the competitors, mm. but you know that this one will outlast you. Mm. And when you are old and gray, you'll be pleased that what you built is still you know, doing what you, you set out to do. There is no future mm -hmm. for those who are doing, doing, the, doing the shortcuts. Mm. They thrive only for a short while. Mm. They never go the distance. Amazing. Wow. Let me have your, finish your point, the one I asked you earlier on. Um, Sorry about that. It's um, okay. I think for the young leaders, for me, uh, my, my, my real interpretation of integrity and, and value and doing the right thing is a leader who is ready to look at power. Mm. You know, you look at power directly mm. and you tell the power, no, mm. this is wrong. Mm. So if our young leaders and even the older leaders, if they're able to look at power and say, what you're asking me to do is wrong, then we are on the right path. Mm. We are safe with that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have both of you go. Um, yeah. Have your last word on this one. Mm -hmm. Talk to the young mm -hmm. person. What we come around, Yumbani? Yeah. There you go. Whichever you. is <laughs> you're facing. <laughs> Thank you. There's a young person watching this, and mm -hmm. they're fascinated with this conversation, mm -hmm. and, and, and they need mm -hmm. the last impartation, even as mm -hmm. this uh, show comes to an end mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have Dr. Halima go first on this mm -hmm. one also. Your last word to young, aspiring leaders in under two minutes. Okay. Uh, so to the young, aspiring leaders, there is hope. And I want all the young people to actually vie for this leadership position across all levels. Mm -hmm. And leadership, it doesn't mean you have to be the CEO. Mm -hmm. For anyone who has been given a responsibility, is a leader at that particular level. Just be brave enough. And I'll repeat again, look at the eye of the power and tell the power, no, mm -hmm. 
this is wrong. I am not doing it. Yes. Great. Uh, thank okay. you. Um, being gifted, being skilled can take you places. It can open doors for you. But only character will maintain you there. So take time not only to become skilled in what you do, but also to build your character because it is that character that will give you the, the, the power to last the distance, to persevere, to be able to stay strong in the face of challenges which are going to come you know, during the course of your career. Amazing. Uh, many thanks, my panelists. Right here, we've been speaking to two vice chancellors. One, uh, Dr. Halima of of Uma University. Mm -hmm. Hope I got that right. It's yes. Uma University, right? Yeah, uh, vice chancellor Uma University. Good to have you on board. Thank mm -hmm. you so so much. And of course, I've been speaking to Dr. Kim Tim Kiroi of the International Leadership University. The conversation doesn't end here. The conversation about leadership never really ends. Mm -hmm. We have to keep on having a cycle and conversations that are ongoing, repetitive for us to get the best of the best. And we have a lot of hope in the young people. Of course, as we have said, if you're a young person in university, consider having some ethics in what you do and even as you pursue that professional course. And that's why we end it right here. I am Brian Giorgettino. I'm gonna hand you back to the studio, but the Book for Life event continues right here at KICC. Come, let's mix. Come, let's, let's interact. Let's talk about some of these things and let's talk about your career and your future and what you want to pursue. You're going to meet amazing, amazing uh, exhibitors right here who are going to show you various things in your career life. That's why we end it right here. Many thanks for your time. The conversation continues.